Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Nick and in today's video, I'm going to be explaining exactly how you can find undervalued growth stocks to buy in the stock market. For those of you guys that have been wondering how I find my undervalued stocks that I share on this channel, this video is for you. The strategy I'll be teaching you today is one that is based on a long-term investing horizon and that is timeless, meaning that it's going to work in any economic environment. As a value investor, I'm always looking for good value in the stock market, which is exactly the strategy that the great Warren Buffett has been employing for his lifetime. And finding value in the stock market simply means that you're looking for assets that are trading cheaply relative to their fundamental value, or in other words, their price is discounted to their value. Now, when it comes to higher flying growth stocks with seemingly very high valuations and their stock price is always going to the moon, it is still very possible to find undervalued companies in these types of stocks. So I will be sharing a few examples later in this video. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a comprehensive guide on how I analyze growth stocks and how I find value in these stocks in the stock market with basically any industry or any type of stock. All I ask from you in return is to destroy that like button because it does help out my channel and it does tell me that you guys like these types of videos. And if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing with bell notifications on just so you don't miss any of my future uploads. By the way, if you are a more experienced investor and you want to skip some of the fundamentals and get straight to the valuation analysis, Analysis, then go to this timestamp right here on screen. Otherwise, let's get straight into the video. All right, so step number one in finding undervalued growth stocks is to choose a business to analyze. Now, if you're new to the stock market or you just don't know that many companies out there that you might wanna buy, one of the best tools to be able to use to find these companies based on certain criteria is a stock screener. A stock screener allows you to search for publicly traded companies based on certain criteria you might have. And Yahoo Finance actually has a free stock screener that allows you to search for stocks by country, industry, market cap, or valuation metrics like the price to sale or the revenue growth. For example, if we just want to do a quick scan for some growth stocks, we can search for growth stocks in the US that have a large or mega market cap, a price to sales less than 10, and revenue growth greater than 30% over the past year. Then once we click find stocks, we get a bunch of results which include some of the big companies like Amazon, Alibaba, AbbVie, AMD, and many more. So this will give you a quick way to screen for some growth companies that are pretty good out there based on certain criteria, but of course the analysis does doesn't stop there. Now, in addition to the stock screener, if you don't have any criteria and you just want to pick a company that you love or you know their products, such as Instagram, you might want to choose Facebook. So once you've picked a company, let's move on to the next step in the video, which is step number two. And this is all about analyzing the fundamentals of a company. And let me be clear, guys, at this point, I have not even looked at the stock price of this company. It is completely irrelevant to look at the stock price at this stage in the analysis. All I care about are the fundamentals of that underlying business. Now, the first metric that's extremely important for growth stocks is of course the revenue growth. Now for growth stocks, it's important to know that the revenue growth is much more important than the earnings growth rate, as long as the company has a plan to future profitability. So as a general guideline, I typically wanna see companies that have a revenue growth rate of at least 30% if I'm buying that company for its growth. And it's very important to look at a company's historical revenue growth rate just to be able to see if that revenue growth rate is sustainable into the future and that it wasn't just a one-time event. For example, I recently made a video about Peloton stock, which is a huge growth stock that I I've been buying. Peloton has been able to grow their revenues at 100% plus year over year over the past five years consecutively. So this shows me that there is strong demand for their products and the company should be able to maintain a strong revenue growth rate into the future. Now I did find this information on the Peloton website, but for many other companies, you can find this on Morningstar or Yahoo Finance under the financials tab. All right, now the next step is to find out the business's profitability, AKA at the end of the day, is this business making profits or is it losing money? Now this step is simple yet incredibly important because you will not be able to analyze profitable and unprofitable companies in the same way. So therefore we need to distinguish between these two types of businesses by finding if they have earnings per share or EPS. The EPS will tell you if the company is profitable because it's simply the net income divided by the outstanding share count. To find this, you can go on Yahoo Finance under the statistics tab and then find the diluted EPS TTM. Now, if this number is positive, then the business was profitable over the last 12 months, but won't show whether it was profitable for several years in the past. All right, now this next step is for profitable businesses only, and that is to figure out the EPS growth rate. If a business is profitable, I'll always be checking to see if the earnings per share or the EPS is growing over time. So as a general guideline, I typically want to find EPS growth of at least 30% or more per year if I'm buying a profitable company for its growth. 
And again, just like the revenue growth, it's very important to look at the historical EPS growth to make sure that this company is able to sustain that growth rate over several years or if it has in the past. For example, if we take another look at Amazon, we find that this company has grown their diluted EPS at a compounded annual growth rate of 89% over the past three years, which far exceeds my guideline of 30% growth per year. However, for unprofitable businesses, what do we do? We don't have any EPS, so therefore we have to look at the gross margin. Now the gross margin yields the gross profit after subtracting the cost of revenue from the total revenue, so it shows how profitable a business might be able to be in the future. For example, if a business generates $100 million of revenue, but then its cost of revenue is $90 million, it'll be left with a gross profit of $10 million, and that would represent a gross margin of 10%. In this scenario, the gross margin is low, meaning that the business would not have a lot of money left over because they would still have to pay taxes, interest, and other expenses on top of that gross profit. So basically, the higher the gross margin, the more profitable that business could be in the future when it starts generating profits. So in general, I'm looking for companies with gross margins greater than 25%, but really it depends on that specific company and the specific industry it's in. As an example, let's take a look at Peloton once again to find out what its gross margin is. As of Q3 2021, Peloton had a gross margin of 35%, which seems pretty good. It should be noted that this business has still not achieved full year profitability, but with a healthy gross margin, it's definitely on the path to future profits. Finally, the last metric I like to check for growth stock fundamentals is the amount of cash on hand, which applies for both profitable and unprofitable companies. Cash is both incredibly important for the company's growth to be able to maintain their operations, but also to keep them stable during times of financial insecurity. And this metric is found on the company's balance sheet, which can be seen on Yahoo Finance under financials and then the balance sheet. For example, let's take a look at Peloton's balance sheet. Peloton has total current assets of 3.5 billion while they have cash just over 2 billion. On the other hand, their total current liabilities are only 1.3 billion. So this means that the company could pay off all of their current liabilities with the cash on their balance sheet if they needed to and they were in a sticky situation. Also, we can see that their total current assets exceed their total current liabilities by about 2.5 times, which is a very good sign. So overall, it's very important to find growth stocks with a lot of cash on hand to fund their growth, but also to weather any unexpected storms. Alright, so now that we understand some of the fundamentals that we want to see on a company's balance sheet and within their financials, we can now start to look at the company's stock price and their valuation metrics. These valuation metrics will help us determine how expensive or cheap a stock might be relative to its fundamentals. So let's first start by analyzing unprofitable companies. Now when it comes to unprofitable companies, there aren't any earnings or EPS to serve as a baseline to figure out how pricey that stock might be. Therefore, what we need to do is to look at the price to sales ratio or the P to S ratio. This ratio simply shows how expensive a stock will be trading relative to the amount of revenue that it's earned over the past 12 months. And generally what you'll find is that the higher the revenue growth rate, the higher the PS ratio the stock will be trading at. For example, we know that Peloton has not yet achieved full year profitability, so we can go and figure out its PS ratio from Yahoo Finance, which is currently at about 9. At this point, there are a few ways we can determine if the company is undervalued or overvalued based on its PS ratio. Firstly, we can compare Peloton's price to sales ratio to that over the past few years. So taking a look at Peloton on Morningstar, we find that in 2020, Peloton was trading at a price to sales of 19, which is over double where it's at right now. But this alone doesn't tell us if the stock is cheap. It could be less expensive than before, but it could still be expensive. So the next step is to compare Peloton's growth and valuation to other similar stocks within its industry. Now it turns out that Peloton's closest competitor Nordic Track is a private company so we don't have much information on it. But the next closest public competitor that I would argue is Lululemon as they sell athletic apparel just like Peloton and they've recently moved into the fitness equipment space through their acquisition of Mirror. Right now we find that Lululemon has a price to sales ratio of 9 which is the same as that of Peloton, but its growth is significantly less than that of Peloton. In the most recent quarter, Peloton grew its revenue at 141% year over year, while Lululemon grew its revenue at 88% year over year. So based on these metrics alone, Peloton does seem to be undervalued based on its closest competitor within the industry. However, we can also look outside of Peloton's industry for companies that have a very similar business model that sell both hardware and software, which could be Apple. Apple's current valuation is a PS ratio of 6.5, 
when the company recently grew its revenue at a rate of 54% year over year. So overall, given Peloton's 141% year over year revenue growth rate at a slightly higher valuation than Apple and the same valuation as Lululemon, while its revenue growth beats out both of these companies, it does appear to be fairly valued and if not undervalued. All right, secondly, we need to figure out how to analyze profitable companies because this is a totally different ball game from unprofitable businesses. And the first metric that we want to analyze is the price to earnings ratio or the PE ratio because these businesses do produce earnings or EPS and that is the most important factor of a business. You want to see a business producing earnings because then it is profitable and it is a good return on investment. The PE ratio simply shows how expensive a stock might be relative to the amount of EPS it's produced over the past 12 months. And generally what you'll find is that the higher the company's EPS growth rate, the higher the company's PE ratio is going to be on their stock price. For example, if we take a look at Amazon once again, we want to first take a look at its trailing PE ratio and its forward PE ratio, which are 60 66 and 48 respectively. What this tells me is that the company's EPS is expected to rise over the coming year because its forward PE ratio is lower than its trailing PE ratio, which is always a good sign. But these numbers alone don't tell us a whole lot of information unless we have something to compare it to, so we want to compare these numbers to how expensive Amazon has been trading in the past. So using Morningstar data, we can find that the current PE ratio is 66 for Amazon, but then over the past five years, the company has been trading much more expensive than this, with its PE ratio being far above 80 in some cases. So right now, Amazon is clearly the cheapest it's ever been on a PE ratio basis. We can also look at the price to earnings growth ratio or the PEG ratio, which will tell us a little bit more information about how expensive that company is relative to its earnings growth rate over the next five years. And right now, Morningstar predicted the PEG ratio to be about 1.41, which is slightly above previous years. But keep in mind that this ratio is only a prediction over the next year or two and Amazon is almost always going to beat analyst estimates so it might actually be lower in actuality. Now at this point in the analysis I'm going to be looking outside of Amazon's data and looking for another company that is very similar to Amazon in several ways which is Microsoft. Despite Microsoft not being in the e-commerce business they do operate in the cloud computing business right behind Amazon's AWS and have diversified their tech business models significantly just like Amazon. So if we compare these PE ratios directly, what we find is that Microsoft is at a 35 PE, while Amazon is at a 66 PE, but these companies have different earnings growth rates, so we can't just compare them directly. For instance, Microsoft is expected to grow its EPS at 16.7% per year over the next five years, while Amazon is expected to grow its EPS at over double that, being 37.9% per year over the next five years. So if we compare the PEG ratios, this should give us a more accurate picture of which stock is trading more expensive. And sure enough, according to Yahoo Finance, we find that Amazon's PEG ratio is 1.6, while Microsoft's PEG is 2.0. So Amazon is cheaper than Microsoft. Finally, I also like to check analyst price targets just to see where the company's trading at relative to where analysts think it's going to be in the next 12 months. If the stock is trading at a significant discount to the average price target, this could mean that the stock is undervalued. In Amazon's case, the average analyst price target is 4238 while the current stock price is just below 3500 meaning that it's trading at an 18% discount to where analysts think it could be in 12 months. So based on all of these valuation metrics that I did discuss, I do believe that Amazon is undervalued, but let's take it one step further just to make sure. If I'm getting really serious about buying a business, I'll take one last step to just make sure if I've done everything correctly and to figure out what type of return I might expect by investing in this business. And so for profitable businesses, I like to perform a discounted cash flow analysis or a DCF analysis using Excel. This is really the most accurate method to predict how well a profitable business might perform in the future, but of course it shouldn't be taken as certain by any means. So in this next example, I'll be using Amazon again to show you exactly why I believe this business is undervalued based on its future predicted cash flows, and then what type of annual expected return I might be able to get. All right, everyone, here we are in the Google Sheets spreadsheet where I calculated the future cash flows for Amazon stock. Now the first thing that you need to start this analysis is the 2021 or the current year earnings per share growth rate, 
which I found from Yahoo Finance to be about 33.6%. And then next, we're gonna need the five-year EPS growth rate, which is about 35%, but from Yahoo Finance, it is 37.9%. So here, I just wanna show you in Yahoo Finance on the tab that I'm talking about. So the current year, we can see that Amazon is predicted to grow its earnings at 33.6%. Then over the next five years per year, it's supposed to grow its earnings at 37.9%. And this is under the analysis tab. So if you just scroll to the bottom, you can find all of these growth estimates for the earnings for Amazon stock. All right, and then we know that the years of growth is going to be six years because we have 2021 and then plus five years on top of that. So the total amount of years for growth is six. So what I intend on doing with this data is to try and predict the future earnings per share for Amazon stock using these analyst predictions. So we know that in 2020, Amazon produced $41.83 of earnings per share. So therefore, to predict what it could be at the end of 2021, we have to use this simple compound interest formula and using the 33.6% growth rate up here for 2021. And then that will give us $55.88. And then of course, for the remaining years, 2022 to 2026, we're going to use that five-year EPS growth rate of 35% which is slightly more conservative than the 37.9% that analysts predict. So typing that number into the formula and then pressing enter, this gives us $75.44 for 2022. And then skipping all the way to 2026, we can see that Amazon might produce $250.59 of earnings per share. So we can see that from 2020 of having about $42 of earnings per share to 2026 at 250, that's literally over a 5x in six years. So that is crazy growth for earnings. All right, now the next step is to check what the current share price is for Amazon. So we can see that right now it is about 3,500 US dollars. So I'm just going to approximate it at 3,500 for this example. Then what we can do is calculate the end of year 2020 PE ratio by simply taking the share price of 3,500 and dividing that by the $41.83 of EPS they produced and that would give you about an 84 PE ratio at the end of 2020. But we have to understand that Amazon is not going to keep this 83 PE ratio well into the future because a company generally has decreasing earnings growth rate over time. And that of course will be reflected in the stock price, meaning that the PE ratio will drop over time. So what I'm saying is that in 2026, the PE ratio I'm estimating to be about 40 because the earnings growth rate could drop down significantly. And this would be more in line with a company like Microsoft, which currently has a PE ratio of 35 and its earnings growth rate has dropped significantly compared to Amazon. So I think that Amazon is still going to have a lot of growth in 2026, which is why it's slightly above that of Microsoft right now. So anyways, we can calculate the 2026 share price, which would be 2026 PE ratio multiplied by the EPS that is predicted in 2026 of $250.59. And that would give us a final year share price of $10,024. So since we know the current share price of 3,500 and then the 2026 end of year share price of 10,000, we can calculate the total six year return, which is actually five and a half years, but I'm assuming it's six years and that would be 186% over those six years. But of course we wanna know what the annual return is and by using this crazy formula that I'm not going to get into, we find that it ends up being about a 19% annual compounded return. So this is the number that I've been looking for all along and this shows me that Amazon is able to grow its share price very healthily over the next few years and this is well above the average of the S&P 500 that typically grows at about eight to 10% per year. So given that I'm wanting to beat the S&P 500 with my individual investments, I think that Amazon stock is presenting some great value considering that I could get a 19% annual return. Now we can also be a little bit more bearish. So for instance, in 2026, maybe the PE ratio is a little bit lower. So let's say it's 35. Now in this case, you'd get a total return of 151% over that six years and then the annual return would drop to 17%, which really isn't that low. Like you're still going to be well above the S&P 500 average over the long term, so I still think this is a really great investment opportunity. But anyways, this is a discounted cash flow analysis, and I want to do this for a lot of the growth stocks that I analyze to figure out what type of annual return I could expect investing into this company at a given price. And if the annual return is too low, like if I'm not getting above like a 10 or 12%, 
then it's probably not a good price to be buying into that stock and I might wait for a discount. But here we can clearly see that Amazon is very, very discounted compared to its expected EPS growth rate. So I think that it's going to be a great opportunity into the future. Anyways, with that said, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. And let me know down below what you thought about this analysis and if there's anything that I missed or if you do have any questions about it. Being able to perform your own due diligence, research, and even the predicting the future cash flows of a stock is critical to being an intelligent investor and to be able to produce higher returns by picking individual stocks. So of course, I try my best to do as much research as possible about a business before investing in it. And I'll only invest in businesses that are trading at attractive prices in my own opinion. But anyways, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to smash the like button as it really does help out my channel and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any videos in the future. And with that said, I will see you guys in the next one.